Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Paul'sFinest.com, Mid Island Motorsports located in Springdale, WildMedKits.ca, and Robinson's General Store located in Middle Arm. In two previous episodes of the Newfoundland Hobbyist, we have been working on a new to me 50 year old Kimball piano. Full restoration, a tune up today. We are finally going to finish that project. At this point in the project, most of the piano has been stripped down to the bare wood, sanded, and oiled with boiled linseed oil. Right here now, I'm still working on some of the remaining components. If you've missed previous episodes of this project and you would like to catch up, you can head over to youtube.com and search my name, Kyle Noseworthy. And now for the most fun part of this part of the process, and that is the oiling. Using some boiled linseed oil. It's going to be my choice for this project, but a very, very light amount. Just scrub it in, make, make your lightly soaked cloth go as far as possible until you're almost not applying it anymore. And the more you you work the finish like that as well, the more you start to burnish the finish. And then if you can rub it down with a steel wool after the oil sets up, because this oil will set up and dry. It will not leave any type of like a, a film or a grease like that for any time. But you could scrub this down with a really fine steel wool later and it would just help to burnish that finish and put a light, just a light satin shine on the, on the material. So I think we'll do that later. Wow, look at that color. Oh, that is rich. Now, if you recall, this key cover wears a few different parts. It wears these two plates right along the front, along with a couple brass knobs to use for lifting your key, uh, your key cover out of the way. It carries the little artist console badge there. So there's just a whole bunch of little components, little screws and stuff that we're going to clean up. The only thing I'm not sure about is these big plates here because they appear to be brass plated and a bunch of the plating is coming off. So I don't know what our best, uh, what our best, the best scenario is there. I'm going to give it a try there on the wire wheel, just a brass wire wheel. See how much they'll clean up, how good they'll look. We might end up having to hand finish those. Got to be careful not to lose those little tacks here. Forgot those were even in the bag.
yeah. Now, let's see if I can get in the tiniest nails in the world without losing them. Because I ain't finding those. Okay. Again, just <laughs> look how small these are. Much smaller than a than like a, a thumbtack pin. The good thing, the saving grace, is that I have the holes there already. contrast in the grain just feels beautiful now too it doesn't have that plasticky like old school varnish or shellac on there it's just that beautiful satin natural feel that polished brass Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by EdgeProInc.com, ABS Bussing and Middle Arm, By the Sea Inn and Cafe located in Kings Point, and Nobles Timbermere with locations in Springdale and Bay Vert. Now this next part I've been waiting to dig into ever since I first saw the piano and I spied these big, big brass, at least brass plated, not likely solid brass, although maybe they are, judging by the holes there that are worn slightly, looks like maybe solid brass. But, uh, you know what happens to brass when it gets polished. And I am set up, I'm equipped to do that. So let's have a look. Let's take a look here right now. Let's look at the tarnish. You see? That's how brass goes. And it's, it's very nice when it gets tarnished like that. Over time. You can see right here, this portion is kind of like a, a brushed finish that's because they travel in some uh, like foam scouring pads dampening pads let's see what we can do with these now what I have here is a bench buffer um, bench buffers tend to run a lot smoother than bench grinders speed sometimes is around the same this is not a variable control one um, the main thing about bench buffers is that they tend to have longer arbors be a little slimmer around here so you can maneuver parts nicely. Um, I'm going to start off with a spiral saw. Sometimes with a, with a piece of material like that you would hand sand it first to remove any scratches. I'm not concerned with it being a perfect finish. I'm okay with seeing some of the years of character in terms of little divots and scratches and stuff. 
but uh, my goal is to strip off the tarnish and polish it and if I sand it and it ends up being a brass plating I risk breaking through that plating which I don't want to do so I'm going to take it straight to the buffer here with a rouge compound this stuff, type of stuff can be harmful for your lungs so protection Even better than I expected. Just incredible. There's nothing like refinishing old brass. Now you don't necessarily need a, an expensive bench buffer, even though they're not that expensive. But you can get like different polishes and creams and stuff, and you can put in the handwork yourself. You could even hand sand them with very fine sandpaper. And then use a little bit of cream polish to buff them. But uh, that buffer there just makes quick work. And it does a good job because it's easy to get a really consistent scratch pattern. Which is always a lot more appealing to light and to your eye. Mm. That is stunning. This little toe plate here, however, I think is a goner. I just tried polishing it. It seems more like a plastic or maybe like a, like a brass foil over plastic. It's beat up. It's dented up. I, can't, I just can't see putting it back there on the piano next to these beautiful pedals. It'll throw everything off. Right here is one of the beauties of being involved in so many hobbies. That means you always have extra materials lying around that can be used for different hobbies. Like this beautiful piece of 16th inch thick brass here. This worked perfectly for this project.
And with this, I have concluded the amount of work that I am able to do on this piano. I'm so happy with the work that I've done here with the way this piano has been turning out so far. And now it's time to turn the work over, to turn the piano over to someone who can take this project to the next level. A professional by the name of Riley Stairs, owner of Stairs Piano Craft Limited, a serviced acoustic pianos around the world. Before his work begins, let's take a listen to how the piano sounds now. Riley wasted no time diving into this piano. He immediately started diagnosing problems that I never even really knew existed. You can probably guess what that's from, huh? Eh? Just imprint from the strings. Exactly, yeah. So over the years as it's been played, the strings have kind of dug and cut into the hammers and compressed the felt right in this groove here. So what that does is it changes the tone and makes it a little more on the harsh side. Okay. Um, and you start to lose a bit of the, the dynamic range of the piano because uh, no matter how lightly you play, you're always going to get a bit of a harsh tone. Okay. So the, the fix, we'll say, is to reshape the hammers. And sometimes some buzzing, like... Like I said, the, the hammers could be reshaped and that would be a big improvement mm -hmm. and there's a fair bit of regulation adjustment in the action that could be done to really improve it so that is what regulation is it's That's just right. adjustments in the working components yeah everything from oh, okay. the, the height of the key the balance point of the key the key depth um, oh, all okay. the way back into the the distance between the hammers and the strings the point at which they release moving forward to the string Sheesh. all of that Oh yeah, there's there's 42 points of regulation that are, have to be taken into consideration to wow. make a piano function. Thousands and thousands of pianos On my first time playing this little piano, I realized that some of the keys were sticky and unresponsive. I didn't know the reason why until Riley explained to me how these components move and function. You actually need to repin several of these hammers because as you can see right here, they just do not return to their proper resting position as they should. You can feel how sluggish that is. Okay, so that should just freely that should move and freely. Flop away. Yeah, with about five grams of resistance, roughly. Okay. I'm just gonna do that by feel, but uh, you know, it should certainly come back under the tension of that spring. Oh, okay, I didn't see the little spring. Yeah, I see it there now. So that spring should pull that back. Absolutely. It should fall under the weight of this screw. Oh yeah, it's definitely not doing that, eh? Definitely not. Oh yeah. After some regulation, that is fixing and altering the moving components of the piano, Riley moved on to some voicing, which is controlling the density and the shape of these end felts here, the actual pieces that strike the strings, which help control the tone and the sound of the piano. Overall, it was just a, such a fun experience getting to see a true professional work on his craft, especially on such a niche craft like this, something where there is such excellence required, such a refined skill set. It was very exciting. Thank you to Riley 
for answering all my questions. I love to sit around like this and just bend someone's ear. I ask lots of questions and it's a great learning experience for me. I try to pick up as much as I can. I really appreciate Riley's patience uh, and, and his work. I highly recommend Sears Piano Craft if you need a piano service or tune. So what is it you're adjusting there now? I'm adjusting the lost motion of the keys. So that's all the movement that you see down here before the hammer starts to move. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. It creates kind of a wobbly, loose feel. Whereas it should be like an almost... As soon as you touch the key, there should be movement. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. All under the heading of regulation. And now, for the seemingly arduous tuning process. Being so long since service, this piano needed to be tuned multiple times. Riley Ruff tuned the piano first, and then more accurately tuned the piano. There isn't much more I can say about this process. I will let Steer's work speak for itself. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this episode thoroughly. Thank you to my sponsors who helped make this show possible. And as always, make sure you tune in next week to the Newfoundland Hobbyist. Oh, that sounds so good.